Welcome to Investing in Comic Books. I'm Terry Hockness. Today we are going to take a look at Brave and the Bold, issue number 28 from DC Comics. We're going to look at the potential of investing in this book, the pros and cons of doing so. And we do this with a series of books called Investing in Comic Books, which you can check out at our website, hocknesscomics.com. And we have analyzed over a thousand classic books uh, from the early decades of comic books, as such as this one. So today, Brave and the Bold. So let's dive right in. The first thing that's really appealing about the book is the cover, which came out in 1960 when there were very few superhero books on the stands. And this one featured not only the Green Lantern, but the Flash, Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter, and Aquaman all on one cover. It was the first appearance of the world's greatest heroes team. And this book, just a few notes about it. It's especially rare and high grade due to the white cover. Uh, it's the first appearance of villain Starro and sidekick Snapper Carr. And it's just the fourth appearance of the Silver Age Green Lantern, which predated his own book, which started that same year. And for a lot of people who had never, uh, younger readers who had never even heard of the Justice Society, because that was a decade earlier, this is quite unheard of to have a superhero team. Looking at the CG census, just an overview, 262 copies in all grades uh, have been sent in, but only seven copies graded 9.0 or better. And over the past decade, Heritage has sold about 78 copies. So that average is out to only about seven copies a year or one every two months on average. So very few copies out there. Let's look at the Overstreet price guide. That's usually our best start to decide if the book really is moving up in value. And what do we see in high grades? Definitely. Everybody who is seriously into Silver Age comics knows that this is a megastar in the world of DC Silver Age 60s books. And it's now up to $23,000 in near mint, 9.2. And it had a hefty climb the last three years in a row, in fact. So it's on a good climb. Looking at the 9.0, also a nice climb. Again, pretty high grade. And 8 has even almost doubled in the last five years. And we've seen some growth through all the lower grades. Just because the high grade has more than doubled, we see some growth. So, of course, based on how much you invest in the book, um, the higher the copy, the, of course, the higher it's climbing. But overall, we've seen decent growth in all grades because the book is just simply moving up so quickly. Gone from 10,000 to 23,000 in only five years. Looking at the best heritage sales ever, they've sold a 9.4. And they did that in 2004, so that's already nine years ago. But at that time, the book sold for $60,000. And that was when the book was valued under 10000 So the book brought over six times guide at that time. They also sold a 9.2 five years ago in 2008. Sold for $35,000. And that was at a time when it was worth 11000 So even that brought triple guide for a 9.2. And below that we see a 9.0 sold in 2006. Had sold for 10000 and that was at a time when it was worth about six and a half thousand. So not quite double there, but still. So the top high grade sales have all been way above guide, which of course is what's helping drive the overstreet prices up every year. So what that means is if you wanna buy a copy in high grade, um, actually any grade in particular, you're gonna find that you have to pay over guide for this book. So if you find any deals on eBay where you can buy this book for, for guide, or a little bit less, you're actually getting the best deal that you're likely ever going to be offered. Looking at the CGC census, there are no super high grade copies of this ever been graded. There is only one 9.4 and one 9.2. So in high grade, this really is a scarce book. So Heritage sold the only copies out there, uh, the best two copies in the world, in fact. And so we have to drop down to 8.0 before we start to find a lot of copies. Now this book coming from 1960, uh, early DC Silver Age, this predates Fantastic Four number one. People simply were not stockpiling superhero comics that were new at this time. And the 60s fandom for comic books had not yet started. So a book like this simply was not saved. And so the copies again just are not out there. So summing up, major key book, it features 
uh, uh, DC's greatest superhero team that have now been around for over 50 years features all, all their major characters uh, it's very hard to find in high grade period all grades have gone up so what do I think of this book well for investing I'm gonna give it thumbs up for high grade for sure and even in low grade you're not gonna get rich but I will give it thumbs up as well there's definitely movement every year on this book and the interest is probably never going to die off on this major key DC Silver Age book. If you'd like to learn about this book or books in the series or other classic comics from the gold, silver, or bronze ages, check out our series of books called Investing in Comic Books at hawkness.com. And you can check out, we've covered thousands of classic books. And this will help you invest and also teach you a lot of history about these books. Thanks for watching. I'm Terry Hawkness.